Hello, this is Dr. Steve Nettinger. And I think anyone that's been sick, including myself, can relate to this quote. A well man has a thousand dreams, sick man has but one. I don't know if it's completely true on every level, but we can all relate to the amount of time and energy and effort being sick takes and how much freedom it is to have that condition resolved, especially chronic autoimmune illness, which is something I spend a lot of time with in practice. Okay, so obviously none of this is medical advice. You talk with your own doctor for medical advice. But our thinking about any subject is only as good as the tools we bring to it and the perspective we bring to it. So hopefully I'd like to give you in this lecture a set of tools to think about your health and probably you should know that this is mostly focused on autoimmune conditions and families with autoimmune disease. So just a little graphic here, an auto repair man that has a hydraulic lift at his disposal has a lot better chance of doing a good repair on a car than someone without a lift. So hopefully this set of ideas will be a lift for you to look under your car and analyze your own health issues and try and correct them. So what do I do? Um, I focus on the uh, center of this circle here. No, uh, the conventional medicine focuses on the center of the circle. They do what's called standard of care medicine, which is uh, without being disparaging, it's a kind of a way of saying doing what everyone else is doing to treat what is diagnosed as the cell of same illness. Now, of course, every doctor knows there is no universal illness in any diagnostic category. There's many variables that aren't taken account for in a diagnosis. But still, let's say someone is diagnosed with arthritis. There's a certain set of drugs that are the standard of care. Or someone's diagnosed with colitis or Crohn's is a certain standard of care. Um, it's safe. It's a safe thing to do because everyone else is doing it. If you have a headache and you take two aspirin, the odds are, you know, nothing terrible is going to happen. But also, the chance of cure is very low. Not very often do we hear someone getting cured of their rheumatoid arthritis by the drugs that are used by standard of care, or getting cured by Crohn's or colitis, or any other autoimmune disease, sarcoid or scleroderma, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. You can name the autoimmune condition. And there's really not a good chance of getting cured by practice that are focused on standard of care. What I do in my practice is more to the outside of this circle. Uh, there's a lot more responsibility because we're taking a lot more chance to individualize for the case so someone can come back and say, well, why did you do this and this when everyone else is doing something else? And there's more chance of errors pushing a case in a wrong direction than, say, doing nothing. But there's also a greater chance of cure in my experience. The more to the outside of the circle, the more on the leading edge or the cutting edge of of the um, case or understanding a case you are, the more likely you are to get a resolution of those symptoms that's a permanent cure for someone. And that's always, in my 22 years of practice, that's the most satisfying thing for me. So that's what I'm always looking for because that's what I'm looking for in my own health. You know, I was diagnosed with colitis at a young age, did all the conventional things, went to naturopathic medical school, did all the natural things, and never felt better till I applied the ideas that I'm going to give to you. Now, I kept um, a certain level of health that was better than maybe my peers experienced at the time, but um, this is a shift in thinking that allows me to feel that my health is cured. Um... Doctors are always coming in or practice advisors talking about 
how to make your practice more efficient and more streamlined. And just a little concept here that often the best information is in the friction. In other words, it's in the things that don't go smoothly and, uh, and efficiently. So I've never focused on being efficient in my uh, case management. I just want to get the information. Sometimes that information is in a slow walk rather than a plane ride. So things I'm tired of, just mentally, physically, emotionally, and professionally tired of seeing and seeing unresolved or uncured. Autoimmune disease, people having to do limited or specialty or weird diets, anxiety, inflammation, more anxiety, depression, anything alternative, anything natural medicine, anything holistic, anything new age. I'm tired of every supplement. Spiritual healing where a spiritual consultant wants to charge people to do something like pray for them when you're certainly capable of praying for yourself or your own child. And I guarantee you, to the best of my ability, that I know that those would get heard as well as any other prayer from anyone else. So I'm really tired of that kind of thing. And as a patient myself, the constant feeling like I'm doing something wrong. I ate the wrong thing. I had the wrong stress level. I, I don't know. Whatever other variable you can include that is a way of blaming ourselves for this chronic inflammatory state some of us find ourselves in. And if you don't, this obviously doesn't make any sense to you and it's meaningless. But if you do live in this world of autoimmune disease, and I do, all my siblings have autoimmune disease, um, my kids are prone to autoimmune disease. So I live in this world and I recognize these things very strongly. I think they're just not necessary. Okay, another quote here. The only information worth publishing is that which has been suppressed. Everything else is advertising. And I definitely find that. I don't really need to see another article on vitamin A or vitamin C or milk thistle for the liver or um, acid-based balance and alkaline water. And to me, that's all advertising. Um, hopefully, I'll share some information with you. If it's not suppressed, it's not well known. And so I feel like I have something worth sharing or worth publishing for you. Let me just cover like some old information which is still valid, allergy testing. So there's two ways to kind of think of diet and managing your health. There's two approaches. One is to do allergy testing. I really like the allergy testing that we've developed over the past decade. I find it super accurate and 98% of patients when they were surveyed felt like it made a significant impact in their health. Um, so we can get that very specific scientific information. Count the amount of antibodies you're making per antigen. We check 96 of the most common food offenders, and it's very accurate. So I call that the space laser. You can identify the one food, nuke it from space, and you can eliminate the food allergy that way. But there's another approach to this attack, and one is to increase the def the other alternative approach or approach that can be used in conjunction is to not focus on the enemy, but focus on your defenses. And that's where we're going to start to talk about worms, how worms can increase your body's defenses to these hyper inflammatory conditions. Now, you'll excuse me for a sec. Let me just escape out of here and make sure we're still recording. Because I'm not an expert at this. Yep, everything looks good. Wish I had a little more feedback, but okay. All right, those are the two, the two options for you. So here's a patient, simple egg allergy, did her IgG food allergen test, came back super high to eggs, and she had 30 years of colitis, went off eggs for two weeks, came back and said she had her first solid bowel movement in 30 years. So very accurate, 
very helpful, very specific. Again, that kind of science of just nuking that one allergen out of the health picture. That's the not, uh, that's common, but for highly autoimmune patients, it's not likely to be curative. Um, does sugar cause cancer? That question always comes up. Yes, when someone has a sugar allergy and they eat sugar, it can suppress their immune system. So that's another example of using the space la laser to be highly specific about what's stressing the body. I like to test both the IgG and the IgA. The IgG usually shows up in about a month. The IgA takes about a week to show up. But they're different parts of your immune system, like the Army and the Navy are different parts of our defense system. So they can do different things. And in this case, you see you don't you see a small egg allergy on the IgG, but very high on the IgA. So again, with this patient, we might decide just to pull out eggs based on both results, where previously we might have said just pull out the IgG allergen. Cancer has a huge association with egg allergies in my experience. About 95% of my breast cancer patients show an IgG allergy to eggs. And I don't know why, but here's an example of what I think might be going on. Remember, an egg is an undifferentiated stem cell. In other words, it's tissue that will become other tissue. And a cancer cell is tissue that's kind of lost its identity of where it belongs. So they're kind of crossing at the same, they're meeting at the same crossroads of not being specifically a cell type. And if the body is allergic to eggs, it might be de dedicating some of the anti-cancer system toward eggs. So those are the simple IgG, IgA cases. But then I have patients that come in like this. This is a seven-year-old kid that's basically allergic to everything. So the, being, the elimination is not going to be an efficient approach in this case because elimination is stressful in and of itself to the parents, to the child. And then we could be removing something that has some value. And this patient, this young boy, was allergic to eggs also. Okay, I'm going to stop there and we'll continue with part two. Because I need a little break. <laughs>